So, my line, Santa Jaime, and that begins with Ai Mundo Irineo Seja. And he went from Maranhão, which had lots of very tall black men, like him, he was two metres tall, and he went all that way, which is a very, very long way, in the 1910s. 1914, he arrived in this part of Brazil. At that time, here in Europe, we were having one of these wars that required a constant stream of rubber, and there was a gold rush for rubber. So, all kinds of people were going to the Amazon to find their fortune, and Mr. Uneo was one of them. He ended up working with the Border Commission, and he ran into a shaman there, and he started drinking with the people there. There's a few different stories about exactly what happened, but he met the Queen of the Forest, who he identified later as one of the same as the Virgin Mary. Mestre Irineo was a very devout Catholic, came from a very Catholic background. And the tradition that I'm part of is a mixture of folk Catholicism and indigenous shamanism, and also certain influences from the esoteric tradition of Europe. You have, for example, Alan Kardec's take on spiritism. It adds a great deal to our tradition. So what is ayahuasca when we look at it, or what is daimi? Daimi is a mix of two plants, and this is one of them, Banisteriopsis capi. We call it jagubi, or we call it hey jagubi, which means king jagubi. And in our section of the alchemy, or the pechil, or the making of daimi, this is the male part and the male part, which is the female part, which is the leaf. Now, there are many, many different ways of making ayahuasca. Does anyone know any of the other plants which you can use to make ayahuasca? Very good. Anything else, shall Okay, Chacruna. Chacruna is the same as, um, where is it, that one? Uh -huh. Acacia. Acacia, good. Very good, excellent. All right, and does anyone know what these things contain? DMT, excellent. Uh, and which? Parmala. Parmala. Any more? Um, okay, okay, no, 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 no. And does anyone know what DMT, uh, the, its longer name is? Do you know what its even longer name is? LN-dimethyl tryptamine. Okay, excellent. You know more than the Crown Prosecution Service. Um, quite recently, the defendant in the English Dimey trials got a letter from the Crown Prosecution Service on headed paper, and at the bottom it says Special Crimes and Counter-Terrorism Unit, and they had misspelled NM Dimethyl Tryptamine. They'd missed out one of the end, and they'd uh, missed out one of the Ys as well which is extraordinary, and it's also just amazing, you know, these people who are charged with protecting young terrorists. But anyways, something is on the prescribed substances list, although the CPS has trouble, has trouble spelling it. The way that these two plants interact is that the harmine and the harmaline, they're monoamine oxidase inhibitors. DMT, if you just eat it, you won't notice it. Gets broken down in the gut by enzymes, and all the So, if you inhibit them with something in jagubi, with harmine or harmony, then the DMT can get into your brain and it can do all kinds of interesting things to it. I'm not really going to talk about the pharmacology that much, and I'm not sure it really adds that much to, to talk too deeply about it. I don't know enough about it. Right, the hyena is the part which contains DMT. This is what it looks like. And this is my friend Flavia. She's picking the leaves. Normally it's the women who pick the leaves and who clean it with their legs open. Um, sometimes they can see every day. And then there is the male part, which is Jagubi. And Jagubi is a magnificent looking snaky vine. And there are about seven different species. We like to use this one, called Orini. There's other ones and they have slightly different effects. One of them particularly used in more southerly part of Brazil because it grows there. Everyone who drinks it, when they first drink it, they complain that it's really hard on the stomach. We get the vine and then we sit around these stumps and you hit it with wooden mallets. And in fact, Mestre Ireneo, he made it very clear that you weren't to hit it with metal, it was to be wood on wood. 
like I said, all done with a good deal of reverence and prayer and singing. That's what it's like at the beginning, that's what it's like at the end. And then the jagubi and the hyena are put into layers. They're carried onto these big fires and they're cooked. So they'll be cooked once and then the tea is poured back in and then cooked again. And there's a, a fairly complicated method for preparing it and it's a very prescribed method. It's not just any one way of putting it together. Now, in the shamanic system, they might add a whole number of different things to ayahuasca. They might add dakura, or they might add some or they might add tobacco. I got sick in the Amazon and I used an ayahuasca which had six other herbs in it, which is a specific one for kura. Now, in our tradition, we just use these two things. And in fact, Mr. Guineo, he once made some with a different type of hyena, a different type of leaf, and his conclusion was that an ant became like an elephant. So we don't use that. The Feitiu itself is a work of Travaglio. We have various different types of Travaglio, and this is the production of the grimy Travaglio. So that means that everyone is there, also is drinking, and the whole thing is done with a certain reverence. This is some incense being passed about by my wife, and that is the finished product. So this is a little rundown of the history of Mestre Inez. 1914, he arrives in Rio Branco, and he receives his first hymn. Now in our tradition, we don't write songs like Die Straight. We receive hymns. So the songs will come through fully formed with the words, with the melody, with the rhythm, and with the meaning. It all comes very fast. So he received his first hymn, 1916. He was doing sessions with the Centre of the Regeneration and Faith. And then he leaves Brasilea, where he was, and meets some more Indians. And in 1930, he starts to hold sessions in a place called Villa Ivonechi. Now, this was a community with Mestri and a bunch of families who lived around his house. And remember, this is a very traditional, very conservative and very Catholic part of Brazil. And he was extremely tall and doing something that people found a little bit odd. Even today, the people there are somewhat wary of the Indians. Back there, it was much more serious. And he was accused of devil worship. Much like when the first missionaries arrived in the Amazon, they accused the Indians of devil worship. Lieutenant Costa, who was famous for his ruthlessness, arrived at Mestri's camp with instructions to shut it down or to wipe it out. Mestre Ioneo was arrested, he was taken to be interviewed. By the end of the interview, he not only convinced the interviewer that he was not worshipping the devil, but that he was doing something fantastic. And he was given a plot of land in Rio Branco, which is called Alto Santo, which is where the first daimi church was set up. Through his life, various different aspects of the, what we call the doctrina, or the teachings, were added. First there was a uniform, and then there were songs, and then there were instruments. And at one point he decided that everyone was to play the maraca. So in a shamanic ceremony, it's the shaman who plays the maraca and conducts everything. But in our ceremony, everyone plays maraca, and you play it like this. Or you play it like this. Depending on the type of hymn, and there's another way to play it as well. But it's... Um, it's something that everybody does together and the nature of our ceremony is something that everyone does together and what we're trying to get at is uniform. This is very different again from perhaps how you might be familiar with working with psychedelics. This is a bus going to Irenaeus Serha because the area of land where he was given is still named in his honour. And this is a flyer recently talking about the religious traditions of the area. So here you can see ayahuasca, Buddhism, or... What I'm getting at here is that ayahuasca is a totally integrated part of Acriano society in this part of the world. It's very, very normal, and in fact, the health authorities in Rio Branco said there was absolutely no problem with us taking ayahuasca. So here's the daimi ritual. You can see that the women are on one side, the men are on the other. They're everyone's neatly lined up in accordance with height, and uh, everyone has their maraca, and... Everything is very, very prescribed. You have about this much space to dance in, and you dance like this. And it follows very much the Catholic format. 
we do ceremonies on the saints' days, St. John, Virgin's Conception, and we do two sessions every month, which is the 15th and the 30th, which are concentrations, and then you just sit down, you drink your dose, and you shut up for an hour and a half, and then you sing 17 songs. Although, at the moment, of course, we're not practising, because the government has decided that we shouldn't, uh, and threatens to put us in prison. This is a great big jagubi. I describe the ceremony in the following way. If you want to get into orbit, you don't want your spaceship to have flaps flapping around and all kinds of bits that aren't glued down properly. Because some people look at it and they say, you know, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to do something so rigid, so formal? And absolutely, if you don't want to do it, I would say don't do it. And in fact, it's one of the taboos of my tradition is that you don't invite people. In fact, I can't invite people. I can't say to somebody, would you like to come drink? And it's, a, it's a taboo. So the people who arrive at the beginning, they, will, they won't be expected to fulfil all the obligations, which means they won't be expected to stand up the whole time, they won't be expected to dance. But as they progress and learn to work with the sacrament, they might ask, can I take my star? And when you take your star, that's something like initiation, and then you're expected to take a, a more central role in the ceremony. Now, you can sit down, but only for three songs. So it's hard work, and we call it a work. That's the name of the session, we call it trabalho. It's not really about sitting around, lying around, and enjoying your visions, although there's certainly an aspect of that. You're meant to be on your feet, you're meant to be moving in unison with everybody, and if you're sitting down, really you're kind of mm, dragging it down a bit. So the idea is that everyone goes together, which is a break from the shamanic tradition, where it's the shaman who goes on his visionary mission on his own. And we have other ceremonies. For example, this is a wedding. Are there any questions so far? Do yes. we drink during the wedding? Well, what will happen is they will do a, a session. There'll be a, a drink and a hinario, a series of hymns. And then after that finishes, there'll be a wedding. And in fact, people from outside the church will come to the wedding as well. It's extraordinary. You'll see people in their kind of wedding outfits and their high heels tottering around. So... As Daimi spread to other parts of Brazil, it was banned by the Brazilian authorities. And then shortly afterwards, it became clear that the ban was unconstitutional and the Brazilian government did something fantastic. They commissioned a study. This is the Ministry of Health and the Federal Council on Narcotics. They got together a panel of scientists, psychologists, sociologists studying the communities. They did a whole battery of tests over two years and their findings were glowing about the ayahuasca release. 